Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about uh, creating atmosphere and basically painting a scene using thick description. Fit description is a term that we use in ethnography to describe how we take as much as we can from our surroundings, distilled to a form that's easily understandable, um, it's thick with description, it's ripe with what was going on at the time that you wrote it, and how, you know, that type of description kind of carries forth a lot of power when it comes to qualitative research. Now, this isn't a video on research, but types of skills we utilize in doing such a thing for research, we can definitely start to put into the table. So for example, a big exercise I usually take is whenever I go out hiking or walking, um, I try to take the feel of everything around me, like what's going on, what's, uh, what do I see, what do I feel, what do I smell, what do I hear, um, and kind of think about how I would, you know, put that out there for a table to kind of be in the same moment with me. So thick description in that sense, in a tabletop sense, is all about invoking the scene to your table, especially important in horror games, right? So one thing that I always like to do, it's very, very simple, is use at least three senses every time you set up a new scene, right? Let's say your players in a, let's, let's put it in Ravenloft, right? Say your players in a Ravenloft, they're in Barovia, you know, being either pursued by Strahd or trying to pursue him, whatever the case may be, they walk into a tavern in Barovia. What things set this place apart to make it different from other taverns? Because everybody's expecting to hear the chattering around the tables, like maybe the occasional like silverware on plates or, um, you know, smell pipe smoke from people or, you know, they hear the, the crackling of the logs in the fire. Those things are kind of standard for every like tavern or inn, right? Like that's what I expect in a fantasy game. I walk into a tavern, that's what I hear. It's what the, the playlist essentially kicks up in my mind is just that general background noise from like a restaurant and then a fire and then some of those unique smells that, that are, you know, part and parcel for things back in that age. So in Barovia though, there'd be a little bit of a difference. Maybe the air's a little bit chillier, no matter how heavily the fire is raging. Maybe there's a, just enough of a chill in the air that leaves a little bit of a goosebump, you know, on the, on the back of the player's arms, you know. Uh, maybe there's an odd scent of spices that are used here, like um, if we want to go more towards that European, like some paprika in the air, things of that nature. Maybe um, what they see, the clothing, the colors, those are all different what they would see in like a normal tavern. Walk into a town and like, let's say like, Kryn and Dragonlance, you walk into the end of the last home in Solace, and you're going to see a lot of warm colors, a lot of autumn colors, because when we got introduced to that in the books and on the cover art, it was always like in the autumn. And it always had a lot of colorful, you know, um, things about it, be it the leaves or, you know, the way that people's dress, you know, kind of flowed in with all the rest of, every, of their, their townsfolk. Um, maybe that's the case here, but in Barovia, they have that really weird, I guess, affliction where not everybody has a full soul so colors are a little drab a little more washed out and you can describe that and invoke that with just like the visual senses if you want to invoke it with some of like other senses like hearing like maybe sound seems a little muted a little subdued you know it it, it takes a while longer for everything to kind of process because the very atmosphere in this world is is kind of oppressive because of Strahd so you can adjust these things toward whatever setting you're going for. Turn the the usual into the unusual to make a setting kind of stand out from one to the other. Or, you know, the difference between walking into a mummy's tomb versus a lich's tomb. Both are gonna have certain sensory, you know, like clues, right? You would expect to, to smell like that, that like dust and maybe a, a cloying scent of decay. You would expect things to be still in both places. Um, whereas like a mummy's tomb may have like, for those who are arcane, you know, or sensitive to mystical things may have some sense of, of like energy still kind of just subtly on the undertones of the seeing. But if you walk into a lich's place and somebody is there, you know, they might feel more oppressive, more powerful, potent magical energy is just kind of in the air. You can use like these extra sensory details, especially when you have characters that are attuned to more supernatural things to your advantage uh, around the table. Um, Generally, what I try to do, like I said, was use three things. Each one a different sense, maybe four. But don't throw them in all the time, you know. Definitely they're good with setting up a scene, 
when a, a players first walk into, like say a basement, they can smell mil mildew, a little bit of that waterlogged, you know, smell. Maybe the air is a little damp as they walk through. They can kind of feel it you know, on their skin and uh, everything echoes just a little bit too much, you know, down below when they step down the, the creaking stairs. Um, and then vision wise, they're not going to see much unless they have a light with them. And, and even then, like if you want to invoke like a, a tense thing, you can have shadows be cast longer and deeper than normal. They kind of obscure a lot of the place around them. Uh, leave an air of mystery, right? Three sensations is usually pretty good. Um, one of my favorites to play with though is temperature. Temperature, I think, can be a really interesting mood piece, right? Because if you're in a place that's just damp and dark and you're just constantly sweating under your armor, under your clothes because it's just so humid, that creates kind of like an uncomfortable, you know, sensation. Likewise, if you're going to something more creepy, you can you can play that card of things being just cool enough that, for example, the hair on the back of the nut stands up or the goosebumps cover the back of their arms while their characters are walking through the scene. It just seems a little bit uncomfortable, just enough to kind of put a character on edge, right? So these are things that are easily done around your table. When you look at a scene, like in a module, for example, you may see that they start talking about a couple of different sensory inputs. Add a couple more of your own in there. You know, one or two maybe, because obviously you're gonna get visual. That's the obvious one, right? We're all gonna know what our characters see, provided they're not, you know, um, unable to do so for some reason, like darkness or an affliction, um, you know, things of that nature. Um, so th vision's an easy one. But when you're talking about things like hearing, how does an echo sound in one cavern versus another? Or, you know, how do footsteps carry? Are they hearing something just on the edge of, you know, that spectrum of, of you know, audible sound in the distance? Um, is it wailing? What is it? You know, you can you can start using these these things, these sensory inputs as like parts of your setting, parts of your surroundings. And when you think of them as attributes to the setting as opposed to just something you tossed in for flavor, um, it becomes easier to write for them because every time you open a new scene, you'll think, okay, what do they see? What do they hear? What do they smell? What do things feel like? You know, if they pick up a book, is it dusty? Do they feel like the grit under their fingers? Um, you know, is is the binding old and almost falling out so that they, they can feel how weak it is when they open a book? Do they feel the brittleness of a page as they turn it? You know, these types of things really start to set a mood and much like tension we were talking about previously um, you can use this combined with managing tension to really start to create this interesting dance of details and tension and horror around a table and it helps you up an air of mystery it helps you make things feel more visceral and especially when you get into combat situations when you start describing a scene or like actions that occur uh, in combat, you can start adding like maybe one or two sensory details involved in like a, a critical hit, for example. A, a player feels the hot, you know, splattering of their enemy's blood when they strike a critical hit and actually drive them down towards the ground. Um, you know, they maybe they hear like the the armor clink as they hit it, you know, with an exceptionally hard hit, but doesn't do any damage. You know, things of that nature. You can start making combat and other scenarios and like just walking in new scenes vibrant and you make them feel more alive and that's thick description for role-playing games it's really useful it can be really awesome to help you set a scene and keep things going and make things feel you know a little more like in the moment and you can get your players especially their characters really caught up what's going on if you're laying out the description along with the steady pacing good tension management all these types of things put together can be really awesome tools in your belt to make a game go from good to awesome. Anyways, that's all we got time for this week. I'll catch you guys next week. I think we're going to start talking a little bit more about encounter design, how it differs between horror games and normal adventure games. We'll see you all then, and as always, have fun. <laughs>